Namaste, I am Pramod Swedi, an MPhil second semester student of Nepal Open University. Today I am presenting on Roman Jacobson's on linguistic aspects of translation is a part of the internal assessment of translation studies. This is an outline of uh, my presentation. Uh, let me introduce the writer Roman Jacobson first. Uh, Jakobson is a Russian linguist and a formalist. He is one of the founders of the Prague linguistic circle and one of the most influential intellectuals of the 20th century with his remarkable contributions to linguistics. His paper entitled On Linguistic Aspects of Translation is about the types of translation and some aspects of translations. It also deals with some of the problems and discrepancies that a translator has to uh, face in translation. Let's see some of the definitions of translation from the definitions of translation given by Apia, Nida and Jakobson we can say that the translation involves the interpretation of the meaning from one linguistic sign into another and it is very difficult task because no two languages are identical and no absolute correspondence can be found uh, between any two languages. However, a translator has to maintain the linguistic balance with the original text. Jakobson in his essay on linguistic aspects of translation distinguishes three different types of translation. They are intralingual translation, interlingual translation and intersemitic translation. According to Jakobson, intralingual translation refers to uh, an interpretation of verbal signs by uh, the means of other signs of the same language. It is also rewording or putting uh, the meaning in different words in the same language. This also involves paraphrasing, summarizing, commenting, elaborating within the same language. For example, English sentence described about this uh, picture can be translated as explained about this image. Here the words describe and picture are translated into the same language as explain and image. The synonyms are used for translation but synonymy does not provide a complete equivalence. This translation seems to be mere interpretation of meaning into the same language. It seems uh, that the source language and the target language are the same. Uh, therefore, uh, this type of inter intralingual translation is not considered as a translation uh, activity. Similarly, interlingual translation refers to an interpretation of verbal signs of one language by the means of the verbal signs of some other language. In this translation, source language and target language are different. This type of translation is also called translation proper. And most of the translation activities belong to this type, translating a Nepali uh, poem Pagal into an English poem Lunatic, translating a Nepali story Teskobale into an English story is His Rooster, translating Nepali greeting words like Namaste or Namaskar or Darshan into English greeting words like Good Morning, Good Afternoon, Good Evening are the examples of interlingual translation in which the source language and the target language are different. The next translation type is intersemiotic translation which refers to an interpretation of verbal signs by the means of nonverbal uh, sign systems. It is also called uh, transmutation. In this translation there is transference of message from a verbal to a nonverbal system or from one medium to another. Intersemiotic translation emphasizes overall message, message rather than mere words or sentences. A verbal text or message is translated into different semiotic forms or modes like music, acting, painting, dance, gestures, etc. It includes all kinds of translations of any particular work, a book, a movie, a video game, etc. to another form of textuality or media platform. For example, a movie can be translated into a book and a book can be translated into a movie. In translation, linguistic uh, aspect is the most important thing. 
For a recursion, translation involves two equivalent messages in two different codes, but there is ordinarily no full equivalence between code units. It means there is always linguistic inadequacy in translation. However, despite some linguistic deficiency, uh, translation can be made possible with loan words or loan translation, neologisms or semantic shifts or circumlocutions. For example, a screw can be translated as rotating nail, a steel can be translated as hard iron, tin can be translated as thin iron and chalk can be translated as writing shop. The linguistic inadequacy uh, involves the absence of some grammatical category into target language. For example, in Sanskrit and World Russian language, there is singular, dual, dual and plural number system. But in English language, there is only singular and plural number system. In uh, Nepali language, uh, tense system, there is a gyadbhut, but in English uh, tense, there is not uh, that tense. However, in the case of uh, the absence of some grammatical category like number, uh, tense, gender, etc., its meaning can be translated by the lexical means available in the target language. In addition to the difference between two language systems, cultural differences also pose huge barriers to translation activity. It means cultural factors also play important role in translation. Jakobsen in the beginning of the essay brings the quote of Bertrand Russell that uh, no one can understand the word cheese unless he has non-linguistic acquaintance with cheese. It also shows that socio-cultural acquaintance is very important in effective translation. Actually, the cultural aspect of translation is very difficult part of translation because culture is more experience, experiential rather than expressional. Therefore, the translator has to be careful not to misinterpret the cultural uh, aspects in translation. Another important aspect of translation is creativity or literary quality. Uh, it is believed that uh, it is difficult to preserve the literary or creative aspects of the original text into a translated text. Symbolism, music, pawn, rhyme, rhythm, meter, alliteration, assonance, etc. are the creative aspects of translation that can be cannot be preserved into a translated text uh, in its original text. For example, the test of Sadul Vikridit Chanda which is a kind of famous metrical pattern in Sanskrit language and Nepali language cannot be preserved in, uh, in English translation. Jakobson here admits that poetry by definition is untranslatable. Only creative transposition is possible. It means the literary or creative aspect of translation is not possible. However, if this creative transposition is done, a new creative art may be produced. It means in translation of a literary text, it may lose its originality, but it still can run out to be like a new creation. So to conclude, uh, Jakobson's concept on translation, it can be said that the main characteristic of translation is uh, that it is an interlingual and intercultural communicative activity which is very essential in a cross-cultural or cross-linguistic situations. Despite many issues and uh, disparities, if the translator is well equipped with the linguistic, literary and cultural knowledge and skills in the target language and source language, at least the original meaning can be conveyed to the readers of the target language to greater extent. However, due to the linguistic and cultural discrepancies in two languages and the translation, it is almost impossible to make the translation uh, work of a literary text as palatable as the original text. And these are the references I used to pre uh, prepare this presentation. Uh, thank you very much for watching my presentation. If you have any questions and even feedbacks for me, please uh, feel free to send me to my email address pramodsuvedi30 at the Thank you. Namaste. Bye-bye.